Greetings, it's Maxo Diddly here. Today I am going to be showing you how to validate a credit card number using C++. So let's get right into it. Firstly, make sure you import IO stream, string and vector. Next, in our main method we have got std string number equals then a string value and in the string I've just put some digits. This variable will represent user input. This tutorial is not going to teach you how to get user input, only how to validate it. Click the eye up in the corner if you want to know how to get user input using C++. After that we are going to do stdc out, arrowheads, std bool alpha, arrowheads, validate credit card number and number. So, this is the function we're going to create in a moment, so we will worry about that in a moment. std bool alpha basically means booleans in this c out statement will be printed as a true or a false as opposed to 1 or 0. You don't need it, but it makes it more readable. STDC out is just printing stuff to the console. So let's go and define our validate credit card number function. So this is our credit card number function. We're going to do bool because it's going to return a true or a false, true for valid, false for invalid. Validate credit card number is a function and std string input is the parameter and that's going to be the number we want to validate. If you want to check the user input is a number, click the eye up in the corner for a tutorial on how to do that. So how do we validate a credit card number? Well, there's a very simple way to go about doing this and we can use the Loon algorithm, which is a form of check digit validation. So what we can do is we're going to convert our input into an integer. After that, starting from the right, we are going to double every other digit. If that digit we've just doubled is greater than nine, we're going to mod it by 10, then add 1 onto the remainder. After that, we're going to then add up all the digits. Then, if this total sum is a multiple of 10, it's a valid credit card number, otherwise it's invalid. So, the first step is going to be to convert our input into an integer. We are going to be using a vector. And the reason why we want to use a vector is, we want to interact with each digit of the number individually. So we're going to be using a vector, which is basically an array, but it can do more things, like you can change the size dynamically, which is something we actually want to do, because this input could be different sizes, because an Amex credit card, for example, is shorter than a Visa credit card number. So we do std vector int credit card int. We are creating a, an int vector, and then we're going to loop through every character in this string, our input string, and we're going to be adding it into the new vector that we're creating. And you might be thinking, Max, why are we subtracting a zero character from a value in our string input? And basically, we can use minus then a zero character to convert a character representation of a number to its integer value. So we're literally going to loop through this entire entire string. We're going to loop through every character in it using a for loop. So int i equals zero, i less than input dot length, i plus plus. Then we do credit card int dot pushback, input i minus zero character. So now we need to, starting from the right, double every other digit. If greater than nine, mod 10 and add one onto the remainder. So we're going to do it. We're going to do int i dot length minus two, i greater than or equal to zero, i equals i minus two, and it's going to be in a for loop. So this is literally going to be looping through our credit card number backwards, and we're going to be checking every other digit. Inside we do int temp value equals credit card int i, so we're storing the current digit we're interacting with in a temporary variable. Then we do temp value equals temp value times two, we're going to be multiplying it by 2. Then we're going to check if it's greater than 9. So if it's greater than 9, we are then going to do temp value equals temp value mod 10. Percent mark is how we do mod in C++ and many other languages. And then we plus 1. So what's happening is we're going to assign temp value to whatever temp value mod 10 is. So we're going to basically be getting the remainder of doing temp value divided by 10. And then we're going to add one onto whatever that is. And we're assigning this to our temp value. Then we do credit card int i equals temp value. That's pretty simple stuff. 
This is basically a code representation of the rule we described before. After that, we're going to then add up all the digits. So we do int total equals zero, then we do for int i equals zero, i less than credit card int dot size, i plus plus, total plus equals credit card int. This is pretty self-explanatory, I think. We are going to be looping through every element of the credit card int array, and we're going to be adding on the value in each element to our total variable. And we do this in a for loop, so everything gets added up. After that, we are then going to do if total mod 10 equals zero, return true, else return false. So you might be thinking, Max, what's going on here? Well, basically, you don't actually need an if statement for this. You could just put total mod 10 equals zero on one line of code, but I want to make this a little more readable. If we want to check if a number perfectly goes into another number, we can basically use the mod operation because we know when we do mod, we get a remainder. If a number perfectly goes into another number, that means the remainder is going to be equal to zero. So we can check if something's a multiple of 10 by simply modding it by 10 and checking the remainder is zero. If it is, we return true. Otherwise, we return false. And that's basically it for this tutorial. So we're going to go down to our main method. And in the description below, there's going to be a website and it can generate credit card numbers for you. Now, these aren't real credit card numbers, but they're great for testing programs and learning how the check digit stuff works and the validation. So we're going to try validating an Amex credit card number. So we're going to put that in and hit play. And it says true. Why? Well, it's a it's a valid number. Now I'm going to try another one. This is probably a Visa or a MasterCard one. I can't remember. I mix the two up all the time. And it's true. Let's try another potentially Visa or MasterCard number. It's also true. Let's try another one. And that one's also true. Now let's just type in a... Let's just subtract a few things off and then put one, two, three, four. I doubt this is going to be valid. If it is, I'm just lucky. But that's a false. Um, what happens if we put some letters in here? So we're going to do a bunch of A's, we're going to do some B's, and we're going to see what happens. And it's a false. Now, I do advise you do like an integer type check. There's an eye up in the corner if you want to do that before you validate the credit card, just in case. Also, if you want to do a length check on the credit card to check for certain sizes, or maybe you don't want people to use Amex, so you're going to be like, okay, if it's 15 characters long, we don't want it, that type of thing, even though you should accept that mix, because cashback's really nice. Uh, click the up in the corner for a length check. We're going to try a couple more. That's another true. We'll try one more credit card number. That's valid. That one's also true. So that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more C++ tutorials. Thanks for being a great audience.